Sean. What do you think oh. of the nation's favourite TV shows? Oh. It's, it's oh, uh, the uh, David Attenborough's shows. <gasps> oh, yeah. They're incredible programmes, aren't they? Yeah. Yes, they're very good. He's, he's run out, really, though. He'll end up just now looking under dustbins at Woodlice. <laughs> <laughs> he's done everything else. <laughs> The famous scene of that was the, the giraffes fighting. Did we all see the giraffes? Necking. Yeah, in my head, that's how supermodels fight. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the one with the uh, the birds? I think they were called shoebill birds. Oh God, it was Did, awful. That was the, and the mum. It was like Sophie's choice. What she, happened? she had to. Oh. The mum had to chew. I can't. I'm actually. Go on. I'm telling. Go on. Go on. I'm Tana. actually welling. The sh the shoebill mum had to. Chew. Oh, it was horrible. Did you, what did she you have to choose? She had to John, choose. John, comfort her for God's <laughs> sake! <laughs> she, had to she had to choose between her two chicks. Which one to save? Which, which, which one did? <laughs> <laughs> which one did she save? <laughs> no? which she, which one did she, save? <laughs> she chose the stronger one. She didn't even choose the weaker one. <laughs> she's a good mum. <laughs> That's what they would do, a good she, mum. Bad yeah. mum would go on out of the week. She, no, she knew that the race of Shoebill would continue if she went for the stronger one rather than... Mm. Oh. And also, she has no feelings. Of life. She's got a tiny <laughs> brain. She's got a tiny brain and no feelings. So it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> the look in her eye, she knew what she was doing. No, she didn't. <laughs> She's she a, her brain's probably about no, that big. No. <laughs> Her eye, the weird thing about them is their eyelids, I seem to remember, flick round to the side and she came into the camera and the eye went like that and flick round as if to say, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrendous. <sighs> Did they by any chance put some emotional swelling music underneath it to make you feel like she was making an yes, emotional choice? Because yes, they have to drown out the sound of Attenborough and the camera going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll finish it off. You take the other one. <laughs> it would be. I've got a anyway. shovel here. Okay. I'll sort it out. <laughs> yeah. I've got... I've Don't got... worry, you fly off. <laughs> it's like sandwich spread by the time he's finished. <laughs> and again, no! stop now! Stop it! Let's have a look and see if it's up there. Yay! Yes, the nation's favourite TV programme to David Amber's wildlife shows. Uh, John's team, what do you think? I bet it's Top Gear, isn't it? Yep. People <gasps> like... Oh, yep. Yes, of course. It'll be those three... Yep. They're basically the twat in the pub, and then one day three pubs all closed and they had to go in the car park. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one of them filmed it on their mobile and it just it's became... It's genius! Like... Top Gear, I used to oh. watch when I was a teenage girl and that is exactly why I'm a lesbian. <laughs> Put then, me off men for life, that programme did. Then I'm a lesbian too. Yes. <laughs> We're all lesbians tonight, John. Yeah. Male? And me. Good. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have to shout because what they're saying is, though, you know in films, the most exciting lines, they whisper. So, like, if you've got a really good script, oh, you yes. just have to go, if you'd come round here again giving it that, I'm going to cut your head off. Right? <laughs> but they have to shout because if you just said, this is the new Ford Fiesta 1.2 diesel, no one will watch it and go, this is the new 1.2. And you're watching it, this is amazing. And then if you watched it written down, you think, oh, you just showed me a car. <laughs> You've been on the show. I love Top Gear. I love anything to do with engines. But there are a lot of people in the world who are emotionally attached to their vehicles. I love starring a reasonably priced car. I think that's a really good feature. Yeah. I watched that repeatedly when Helen Mirren was on. That was absolutely fantastic. Not enough that's crashes. <laughs> 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 I don't like the way that Jeremy Clarkson ends every sentence like that. <laughs> <laughs> every sentence on the show, he ends with a thing at the end. That's how people from Doncaster talk. He's from Doncaster, and if you go to Doncaster, that's how they. Yeah, welcome to Doncaster. Is he? That's the Doncaster accent. Or that, or he's a bullshitting charlatan without a personality. He's a bullshitting charlatan without a personality. You know, you know, his cock's made of denim. I mean, we're living Clarks in our time. Let's remember, there are three dicks. There are. Richard Hammond, his appearance is phenomenal. He looks like he's getting groomed on the internet by Noel Edmonds. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's have a look and see if Top Gear's up there. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, Top Gear is the nation's second favourite TV show. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. Tonight, it's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top three most talked about stories of the year. John Steen, what do you think the nation will be talking about this year? It must be the, um, the Wimbledon final. Oh, no, no. No? Well, no. Tennis. <laughs> <laughs> what you, what's the matter with tennis? Well, I'll, be, I'll be dead honest with you. I used to play the third most boring sport known to man. <laughs> Cricket, only trumped by tennis and Formula One. <laughs> Do you not like cricket? It was a means to an end. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was an incredible thing. A British man won for the first time in 77 years. And he hasn't won it since, Jimmy. Let's not let him up. <laughs> this country hasn't had a Wimbledon winner for nearly six months now, and I've had enough. <laughs> it's sad thing, it's a boring name, Andy Murray, as well, isn't it? If his name was like... Dick Gobbler or something. <laughs> <laughs> At least now in 50 years when Sue Barker goes, and of course Britain hasn't had a Wimbledon men's champion since Dick Gobbler. <laughs> Just going to keep hearing Andy Murray all the time. It was weird that this whole talk about 77 years of wait is over. And yeah. actually when he won, it was like, <sighs> thought I'd feel better than that. <laughs> <laughs> to me, nothing really can trump that dressage gold at the Olympics. <laughs> 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 Lorraine, you're, you're Scottish, so presumably I the Andy... I am well spotted. <laughs> well, you're not, like, full-on Scottish. You're like Just the... give you a tiny bit. I can understand what you're saying. You're Scottish light. Um... OK. <laughs> I'm sure that. Now, you, what, did it mean a lot to you? That oh, Andy... absolutely. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. And I think it's a shame that everybody goes on about him being doer. I don't think he is. I don't think he's, he's no, Scottish. He's... I mean, that, you he's, know... He's, he's, he's spread sunshine everywhere, isn't he? <laughs> and remember he cried. Remember he cried when he lost, and then we quite liked him because he cried. Mm. Like, no. <laughs> no, no, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. I mean, I don't. The reason I don't like tennis is because I'm left-handed, and you, you know you can't play if you're left-handed. So you can. You can't play yes, tennis. You, can. <laughs> you can't. You can't play tennis with your left hand. Yes, you can. You can do whatever you like. There's no left-handed tennis players. There is. Other than <laughs> Nadal. Uh -huh, there's no. <laughs> no. He's all right. That's his greatest trick: is making us think he's using his left hand. <laughs> if you try, if you hit the ball, if you tennis ball, if you've got the right hand, you hit it, it goes that way. But if you've got your left hand, you hit it, it goes behind you. You, I have to play backwards like that. Hey. There's someone shouting me where the ball's coming. That's why I, can't, I gave up. This is a stupid game. I'm with Freddie on this. And the worst thing about it is, as well, you, you go to Wimbledon, I, I went for ten minutes once, mm -hmm. they put fruit in your drink. <laughs> you drink. Could you, like, order a pint of John Smith's and then when you weren't looking, they were shoving strawberries in? <laughs> but you, you're a tennis fan, aren't you, Jimmy? You, you like your tennis. I love it. I think it's incredible. Why is tennis incredible? I... It's like cricket, but instead of emitting it... And it going mate, mate, I, I'm, I'm not protecting cricket here. I know it's boring. Do you like anyway, I've, I've got no, there's no two ways about it. Given that the exciting bit of cricket is when he hits it, imagine if the guy at the other end hits it straight back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have a look and see if it's up there. Of course it is. Hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats Uncut, a show all about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 1.5 million Britons would like to be buried with their mobile phone? And if you answer it when you're sitting behind me in the cinema, you will be. <laughs> One in 20 people have held a party for their cat's birthday. Even the cat's thinking, this is a bit tragic. <laughs> 22% of nightclub hookups are one night stands. Yeah, who would have thought the guy you tugged off in a toilet cubicle two minutes after meeting him in Hollywood's nightclub Romford wouldn't turn out to be the love of your life? <laughs> but if you are watching, Darren, call me. <laughs> okay, fingers on buzzers, two more things still to get. What do you think? People are scared of going to the dentist, aren't they? I know you're oh. not, but some people are. <laughs> I was wondering about your teeth. Are they, do you have a... Do you, are these for best, those teeth? <laughs> <laughs> do you have a set for just wearing at home? Yeah, these are for special, these are for best. There's your best teeth. Do you know, I'm upset, Mr Carr, because Cheryl Cole was voted best smile in this country. And I feel like you deserved that. I don't know if she's got the best smile, because I think Ryland has got the best smile. <laughs> yeah, take a look at Ryland. Is that real? 
Yeah, Armitage Shanks did his. <laughs> That's incredible, that's... Is that genuine, that's yeah, his that teeth? Those are his teeth, yeah. OK, so, Catherine, you recently tweeted that you were quoted £6,000 to straighten your teeth. Let's have a look at the tweet. I can't see what they would have done, they're fine. Well, if I had £6,000, I'd sort out my willy finger syndrome, because... <laughs> oh, yeah, you Each... have got a touch of the willy fingers there, haven't you? Each one of my fingers looks like a small penis. Well, I was that's more. To... <laughs> I, I had to get a brace uh, the year before last for... I got punched in the face in a Chinese takeaway. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> he was a drunk man in... and he was being racist to the man behind the counter, and so... that does not happen when the D-man's around. <laughs> so, uh, sure, the enforcer. I, <laughs> I told him to shut up, and so he swung, but he was so drunk, he went that way and fell over that way, and so I stepped back and then... He went that way and he fell that way and, like, this could have gone on for hours. But the <laughs> man behind the counter, the victim, uh, just looked up, had missed what had gone on before and just saw two pricks fighting and he jumped over the counter and punched me in the face. <laughs> 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 knocked that tooth back a quarter of an inch. That is a, that's a good dental story, but not the best dental story. This is the best dental story. Last year, a dentist in Poland was treating her ex-boyfriend for toothache after he dumped her. She knocked him unconscious, knocked him out with the drugs, and then she removed all 32 of his teeth. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I imagine he said... <laughs> Tinchy, are you, are you scared of the dentist? No, I'm not. That's one thing I'm not scared of. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's see if going to the dentist is in our top three. <laughs> yes, going to the dentist. When I was a kid, I was scared of the dentist. He was a paedophile. <laughs> Sean, Claudia, Jack, what have the nation been talking about? HMV have gone into liquidation. They've uh, suddenly realised uh, that people aren't buying uh, videos and DVDs and CDs off them anymore, and that there's this thing called the internet where they are doing it. And so, <laughs> and then, they, then they looked around and think, hey, hang on, we've got huge sores all over the world and we aren't making any money, so let's close them all and, and not do it anymore, cos we're losing a lot of money. That, that's my analysis of it. <laughs> my husband loves a bargain bucket. Do you know how many copies we've got of The Grinch? Um, <laughs> he comes home, he goes, Claude, look what I found. Another cheap bucket. Another <laughs> bucket? <laughs> <I've got Guinness. laughs> The fear is just that there'll be no shops left, you know, mm. in a few years. There'll just yeah. be, you know, those ones that just, they're called, like, value bastard, and they just sell <laughs> 20 <laughs> cigarette lighters taped to a bottle of bleach from Ukraine. You know, one of those <laughs> ones. OK, so are you going to miss it, David? I mean... Uh, I, I don't really have any nostalgia for it. But it's a record store, basically, and it's not in the high street anymore. They're going to have to have a lot more chairs in the top shop change. You know that place outside where the sad boyfriends sit? Outside the changing room, so they've got like four seats, and you sit there going. <laughs> that, they're going to have to expand that massively because normally you would just go, I'm just going to pop to HMV for half an hour and waste some time and buy some stuff we're never going to watch. I go to Top Man without, without a girlfriend, nobody knows. I just sit there all day. <laughs> <laughs> She'll never find the one she wants, lads, eh? Oh! <laughs> let's, let's all go for a beer while she's in there, let's all. <laughs> Top shop that the girls go to. You're going to Top Man. You've said that. <laughs> Still works, doesn't it? Top Man's got ooh, shoes in there, and they're all like, oh, don't know that. Uh, she's in there, <laughs> trying on a suit. Oh. She tells me she's a woman. <laughs> I haven't checked. Bernard told me she's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> trying to find something that doesn't make her Adam's apple look big. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, I saw her going in and you've got the top man. Well done. <laughs> she really struggles to find shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't walk in to... What was the other one? Top girl. Top shop. Top shop. Top girl. I can't walk into top shop without a girlfriend. I look like a bloody pervert, wouldn't I? <laughs> And now you had a you had a DVD out at Christmas, right? Thanks, mate. Did you go? <laughs> Still did available you go... in the shops, half price now. <laughs> did you go? Did you... is that? Do you think that's what? I think I killed HMV. <laughs> well, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> no.
What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panel's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean Steen, what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? Um, I think people have been talking about Guy Fawkes Night. Did you, did you go to a bonfire? No. I, I don't really like fireworks. I think they're like looking at views. Just boring after a while. <laughs> yeah, views. Yeah. I mean, the whole eye is overrated as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> You don't like views. But listen, you go out and then you've got to look at the photos and you go, this is great. And then three minutes in, you think, I'm bored now. I'm cold. <laughs> and then you're stuck there. Sean, is it a big night in your house? Do you do the bonfires? Yeah, I like, I like the bonfire thing. I mean, I had to take the RSPCA's advice uh, quite seriously because they said you should check under, the, under your bonfire for sleeping hedgehogs. And I couldn't find any, but luckily I had some in the freezer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that got that sorted. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, um, I think I look like Guy Fawkes because um, the people on our road did an effigy and it really looked like me. <laughs> <laughs> They'd done it on our road, it was right in front of my house. It was, it was, it was kind of in my front garden. <laughs> They'd even used like a photocopy of my face. <laughs> and they were like chanting, Weirdo out, weirdo out, weirdo out. <laughs> Which must be like a traditional chant or something. <laughs> John, do you, did you go to a fire with this play? It was a landmark year for me. This was the first year when I couldn't even be bothered to go to the window to look. <laughs> <laughs> How, Usually, I mean... if I hear some, I'll go and have a look at my neighbour's fireworks. But this year, I just thought, nah, I'm enjoying Gogglebox. <laughs> <laughs> I think anyone who pays an entrance fee to a bonfire display doesn't understand what the sky is. <laughs> Like, two pound in, I'm gonna stand on that car over there and play with my two pound that I've just saved. <laughs> Taunt them with it. Yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> the best firework display, I think, in history it was in Scotland a couple of years ago. It was meant to last half an hour, but due to a technical hitch, all the fireworks went off in under a minute. <laughs> oh, my word. Let's have a look. This was meant to last half an hour. to the window for that, wouldn't you, John? I would have, yeah, if I'd have heard Armageddon outside <laughs> my window. <laughs> Just imagine being there thinking, oh, how are they going to follow this up? It's <laughs> hard <laughs> oh, <they're> not. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have seen the guy's face who lit them all and at the end <laughs> stood there, just like that. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, would you try to stop them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon he just wanted to beat the traffic. He just sat and just ran to his car. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Firework Night is up there. <laughs> yes, it was Bonfire Night this week. In one town in Kent, locals burnt an effigy of Apprentice star Katie Hopkins, which seems crazy because you can get the real Katie Hopkins for £75 plus travel. <laughs> the next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Dave, David and Krishnan, 10% of British men lie about what at school reunions? What school they went to? <laughs> So 10% of British men lie about... Well, maybe there's no word there, it's just lie about at yeah. your room. <laughs> <laughs> they lie about men they first had sex. If they had sex. I th I'm going to give you that. Yeah. At school reunions, 10% of British men lie about the number of sexual partners they've had. I lied about mine, I, I rounded the number up to one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Sean, Tara and Christian, uh, this is from a poll by Churchill Insurance from January of this year. Okay. Uh, women spend, on average, £100,000 on what during their lifetime? Is it women spend an average of £100,000 on judging from the tampon adverts? Is it skydiving and rollerblading lessons? <laughs> you really understand women, don't you? Of course I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The women I've gone out with, it's not rent. 
Right. You've been hurt, haven't you? Oh, God. <laughs> Botox? <laughs> uh, I can still frown, by the way. Is it, um... Go on, have a frown. Yeah. Frown? Botox. A frown? Is it, that's frowning, is it? <laughs> I... There's nothing from there up. <laughs> well, exactly, so Botox. It's the average woman, not the average socialite. <laughs> I know, clothes. Yes. <laughs> Dave Steen, next, uh, this is from last June. 44% of American dads say that what features in their sex lives? Jacko. The, <laughs> the letter's WWW. <laughs> <laughs> is it being bummed in the woods by hillbillies? <laughs> <laughs> it's smutty, this no. show, isn't it? <laughs> I shall tell you this, because it's quite difficult to get. 44% of American dads say that religion features in their sex lives. Sean, this is according to a survey featured in The Mirror in April. The popularity of what has increased by 26% in the last three years? A bird flu. <laughs> You're half right. I thought it was going to be something like Gary Glitter. You know, because about three years ago, you know, I said, what do you think of Gary Glitter? People going, oh, I don't like him. Whereas now, they go, oh, not really. So that's more popular, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah think, I can see that theory Things working. have got slightly better for him. Oh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> you know, they've, they've started playing his music again. What if Jackson, if Jackson gets done, will they stop playing his music? Radio 2 have uh, said they're going to. They're going to carry on playing it, even if... No, 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 if he gets put away, no more Jacko five really? songs. Yeah. No, it's a shame Phil Collins is such a law-abiding <laughs> citizen. <laughs> <laughs> I should have to tell you this, the popularity of bird-watching has increased by 26% oh. oh. in the last three years. Most ornithologists agree, those birds are definitely up to something. <laughs> Here is your question. Most people would rather wear something practical than look cool. True or false? What do you think? But I think it is age dependent. People, you know, maybe. Gotta be careful here. 40? <laughs> I'm, I'm 40, yeah. Downwards. Go for, you know, look cool. Have you seen the two guys you're sitting with? <laughs> You suffer for fashion. Do you wear heels? Do you wear uncomfortable things to look good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a heel, if there's heels available. If there's heels available, you have a heel. But I also like a flat converse. I really want to say I've got a rocket in my pocket in your accent. Go Do on. it. I've got a rocket in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, would you rather be practical or look cool? I'll try a bit of both. I can't be fat wearing a suit and all that, do you know what I mean? I <laughs> can't do a tie. Can't do a tie? No, I can't do a tie. That's embarrassing, isn't it? Oi! Go on, mate, do him. Yeah! <laughs> well, this is the fight we've been waiting for. You fucking giving it to Biggin? What's going on over here? What's that over here? Yeah, mate, you're giving it to Biggin. He's a dickhead. <laughs> Sean, what, what do you think? Practical? Do you go practical now? Me now! <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, for, for the show, you tend to, you know, you dress down a little bit, but heels and... It's a liberty, that is, dressed down. I think you look well. It's a strong top he's got on now. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Very strong top. I mean... <laughs> you can do the old collars up a bit, I think. You know what I mean? Have a pair of bollocks about you, fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Better, I look better. You look like you're ready for a tear up now, you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> oh, crikey, crikey. <laughs> My uh, tailor always says it's very important to have a pair of bollocks about you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most people admit to lying at least once a day. Is that true or false? It's true. I lie every day. I wake up and say good morning. <laughs> every single day. <laughs> I lie all the time. I like lying. I love it. You lie now? Yeah. <laughs> By 9 pm, I've lied 900 times. <laughs> Women lie, especially. I don't mind about getting my. Uh, I'm on the pill. <laughs> <laughs> Did you lie about that? Three times. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Jimmy, I'll see if you lie, because I've got a question I want to ask you. I've sure, go ahead. Something. Go ahead. Something. Uh, have you had your teeth jazzed up? Uh, yeah, I've had my teeth jazzed up. I that was the exact it. term I used. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want really white. It looked like you swallowed a torch. <laughs> Yeah, well, they were looking kind of shitty, and I was getting, you know... Well, I, like this? Yeah. Did you uh, send them? No, they weren't, they weren't that bad. They were bad. <laughs> <laughs> they, were like, they still look like teeth. I got the teeth of, like, a dead horse found in the Thames <laughs> after about a month. I like your teeth, but then I like what's it? Yeah. This <laughs> <laughs> made me think, oh... Yours are so bright. They're a bit... I mean, when you switch the lights out at night, do moths bump into them? <laughs> What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean's team, what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? Strictly come dancing has started again. <laughs> it's back on. It's huge. Yeah, yeah it is huge. It's massive. <laughs> Although, <laughs> the line-up is a bit... Well, I think most of them should bring a utility bill. I don't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there were huge stars on there. Like There's... who? Which Vanessa Feltz? <laughs> <laughs> you did that. Yeah. I said no. <laughs> no, I did. I did that as well. I've been. <laughs> I've been locked in a house with Vanessa Feltz. So I can testify. <laughs> of course. She's, yeah, I did. Well, uh, you did Celebrity Big Brother. I did Comic Relief Big Brother in 2001 with Vanessa Feltz, and um, and she is. Uh, she's she's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you last in that, Jack? I was in the whole week. I won it, of course. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I remember charm that. Charm and personality that yeah. shines through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, captured the nation's heart. I, I, exactly. <laughs> people, people just sort of warmed to me. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think people kept say. you in because they knew it would irritate you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, do you think maybe she just said, like, I'll come and do the show, but I'm just not going to do too much because I'm a bit heavy? Yeah. <laughs> Do you mean, like, serious, or what do you...? No, I mean, like, seriously, Oh, no, you're like... being incredibly bitchy. OK, great. No! I didn't realise where you were going with this, no, but no, I'm with you. No, 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 you just called her fat. And no, you go, I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't. You never I didn't used call another word. I didn't say... She, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> because I'm just saying she hasn't danced much, and to me, if you're going on a dancing show, you should dance. <laughs> She, no, in your defence, she yeah. came on my show at the start of the year, Let's Dance, and she said, I'm not going to dance. And literally, That's I don't know saying. if you saw it, we lowered her from the ceiling onto a gigantic eight-foot-long cannon with her legs spread-eagled in a sequin leotard. <laughs> Is that the only way you could get her in the building? <laughs> <laughs> David Adocati, would you go on the show? I was just trying to think of what it would require for me to watch it. First, <laughs> <laughs> it would require either a baking element <laughs> or a uh, crystal meth element. <laughs> the ultimate TV show would be a combination of bake... So, like, the Great British breaking bad off, where <laughs> they, they'd all cook meth, but then the judging would take ages. <laughs> yeah. John, would, would you do Strictly? No, I don't dance. The only dance I do is YMCA. <laughs> That's more spelling than dancing. <laughs> Sean, presumably you're pretty... I mean, you watch the show. Would you go on the show? Would you go on Strictly? Well, you know, if... Um, <laughs> if my whole career fell apart in tatters... <laughs> and ..I'd really no option and a lot of tax bills to pay and... <laughs> ..situation... <laughs> no, I actually didn't mean that. <laughs> I mean, you only go on it if your career has reached a certain point. Basically, okay. you, you have to throw yourselves up into the sort of, like, tides of popularity and hope you get washed up on a beach, not smashed to pieces on the rock. <laughs> <laughs> right, then, well, on that, on that note, Jamelia, <laughs> would you do it? Stop. What? <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God, I get asked to do it every single year, and just hell no. <laughs> it's one of the two biggest shows on TV. So but I mean, it's... Do, do you know? Do you know the stupid amounts of money they offer you to do that show? I, I would just oh, what, wouldn't. How, go I on, just, how much did they offer? No, they're like ridiculous. Oh, I mean, ridiculous what, amounts of money. You can buy a house. Put it that way. And yeah, I, but you I live in Birmingham. No. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Let's have a look and see if Strictly is up there. <laughs> Sean Steen, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Batches! <laughs> <laughs> Batches! It's a very upbeat response. Ah, they can't kill all the badgers. Well, they don't know how many there are. Badgers have moved the goalposts. 
This is actually a quote from a government minister. When Environment Secretary Owen Paterson was asked if he'd moved the goalposts, because they're now saying they need to kill more badgers, he said, the badgers have moved the goalposts. <laughs> they do, and that's why they must die. That's just... That's <laughs> they do. Richard, what's your problem with We've with got badges? a massive problem with badgers. We have a lot of badgers anyway, and now we've got all these refugee badgers coming in, running away <laughs> from all these... To sound like Clarkson, mate. No! <laughs> He was rude about badgers. No, he was rude about badgers. I like badgers. But I only like the ones that we already had. And then all the protesters were blowing whistles and banging saucepans to scare them away. So now they've all come and lived at our place. And that's kind of chucked our home badgers out. And, um... How can you tell the difference between the new badgers and the old badgers? Well, they've got different accents. Because... <laughs> no. I think the cull's a good thing, cos they say that there's the equivalent of one dead badger for every ten yards between Tiverton and Exeter. They always say that, don't they? Yeah, yeah. people are always saying that. No, but it's actually quite a useful way of finding your way home. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, instead of just sprinkling rose petals as you walk along... <laughs> just the a usual method, dead, yes. You know, a trail of dead okay. woodland animals. <laughs> We gave it to them. That's what I feel sorry for. We, get, we caught TB in the Industrial Revolution, gave it to the cows, the cows gave it to the badgers, we killed all the cows that had it, we got rid of it, the badgers were just left with TB. Like, there you go, mate. <laughs> anyway. Oh, we've got bloody TB now. Whoa. And now they're trying to give it back and we're shooting them all. It's like giving someone a cold and then shooting them, going, don't give me that cold, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a supporter of the badgers, and I've actually rescued two badgers, um, and because um, they came round to shoot them, and I had a cottage down there, and I took them in, and I pretended they were slippers. <laughs> and I, I would have got away with it, but one of them started coughing. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, what do you make of the badger cough? Well, I think it's interesting because obviously TB is supposedly spread by the badgers, and with this cull now, they're all running for the hills and obviously spreading it even more. There is no TB. The whole thing is just the countryside alliance. It gives them an excuse to shoot something that's slightly black. Why? There's no TB. Do you think the reason people are so upset about badgers is because they're like our pandas? <laughs> so people are very, very feel very, very fondly towards pandas. Do you think people see that badgers are... It's like a shit panda. <laughs> They're a bit like they are a bit like pandas because I love oh. watching two of them shag. <laughs> <laughs> what a panda and a badger? You, oh no no no! Two badgers having sex, not anything weird. <laughs> you like watching a couple of badgers? Because there's, there's two pandas up in Scotland. They're trying to get to have it off. Yeah. So if people like watching pandas having sex, people might also like to watch badgers well, the, do it. The badger might help because the badger could be like a fluffer for the panda. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the way, sunshine. <laughs> I'll finish this job. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if the badger cart is up there. Sean, over to you. What do you think people have been talking about this week? What about Mike Tyson giving up boxing to become a wedding planner? Would you get most of your news from Take a Break magazine? <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Do you know when they reported it to Evander Holyfield? They went to him and said, Tyson's given up. He went, no. He said, yeah, he's actually given up. And he went, I can't believe me here. <laughs> I can tell you, it wasn't in the top five. It was the 19th most talked about oh. thing this week. Mike Tyson has announced this week that he wants to quit boxing. He said that he wants to become a Christian missionary. Uh, though when asked to make the sign of the cross, he said... <laughs> OK, you've got three more to get. Fingers on buzzers. Prince Harry at Sandhurst. Yeah, so this is the story of a Sun journalist breaking into Sandhurst with a fake bomb. The Good thing thing. is, they're always doing this, aren't they? The tabloids, the sun and the mirror. They're constantly, like, you know trying to breach security arrangements. And I imagine every time Al-Qaeda read it, they just go, Ah, oh, I wish we'd thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> Claudia, are you worried about Harry's safety? Uh, yes. I, I was undecided. It was 50... Well, yes, a little. Well, I think... You haven't thought about it, have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> we said it's a, it's like a fake bomb in there, which basically is anything, isn't it? You know, a brush is a fake bomb, isn't it? <laughs> Well, let's have a look and see if this was one of the most talked about things this week. Ooh. Oh, yes. Yes, it was. This is the story of a Sun journalist who smuggled a fake bomb into Sandhurst. Harry was initially excited. He thought they'd smuggled in a bong. <laughs> <laughs> is that 
is it uh, the story about uh, people trying to sell uh, the ticket touts trying to sell on eBay the Live Eight tickets? Because yeah. I was disgusted by that, as everybody was. What did you bid? <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, would, I wouldn't bid, honestly. I, would, I was disgusted. By it. Bob Geldof said boycott it for a week, but they backtracked, so I didn't bother. But at one point, I was going to get me snuff movies and me ivory chess set from somewhere else. And then... <laughs> when you say snuff movie, it's some old bloke going. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Just going, <laughs> bloody weather. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether the Live 8 eBay ticket fiasco was one of our most talked about stories. Oh, yes. Yes. It's the second most talked about thing this week. You've got one more to guess. Is it by any chance the world debt? The fact Tell that me they're going to well, they're going to reduce the world debt. Uh, the Western world is going to reduce the uh, African debt, and it's going to work out to about a pound per person per year, right? Which I thought, that's quite good, isn't it? Pound. I'm quite happy to give that to solve. But then they said, for ten years. I was thinking, <laughs> that's ten pounds, isn't it? <laughs> oh, how tight are the northerns? Oh. <laughs> how pompous are the southerners? <laughs> Not very pompous at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we have a look and see whether the uh, debt cancellation is one of our top five talk about stories? Oh. Yes, I can tell you that the G8 leaders have pledged to drop $40 billion worth of debt. Well, they haven't actually cancelled the debt. What they've done is they've consolidated it into one easy monthly payment. <laughs> Rwanda gets a charming carriage clock. <laughs> and don't worry, Chad, no salesman will call. 